Do you think the two are compatible? Uh, yes, um, I do think they're compatible. I was just thinking of the, the Apple example again. And there are two things I would say here. One thing that I'm always interested in, in, in is not just what do organizations do, but what should they do. Mm -hmm. And this is the positive versus the normative approach to theory. Now, my theories have been much in, uh, misrepresented and misunderstood by saying they're only, quote, normative theories. That is, they're what people should do, but that nobody ever really does it in that way. But the question that comes as I look at these, these plays going back and forth, the question I keep raising is, well, what should they have done? What would have been most effective? What is the outcome you're looking for? Who are we trying to influence? Is it a certain customer? Is it the opposition? Is it our, co our own company? I think it's important to True. influence the company. So the Apple example seems to me is the classic example of a company that decides to do something without consulting its publics first and then finds that it's a big mess and then they have to cover it up and try to, to re realign their policy. Uh, I can't quite describe the, the, the plays that they're using. Mm -hmm. But the question, why didn't they talk with consumers before they released Apple Maps. Perhaps they did and they didn't do it well, but this is the whole idea. It's, I think if we expend, extend this beyond the marketing of new products into, say, uh, closing a plant in a community, building a road through a suburb, uh, laying off employees, all sorts of things that company do, companies do that have negative consequences sure. on publics. Uh, then we need to have a strategy where we listen to them, we, we take their interest into account, we don't necessarily do, we don't cave into them or accommodate them, but at least we take their interest into account when decisions are made. And then you don't have to, if you listen to the public before decisions are made and not just to get a reaction to well, how they reacted to your idea or to your initiative, then we make better decisions in the first place. And those decisions are in the self-interest of the company, more so than just trying to defend a position it takes or a product it releases or, or an action it takes that may not may have uh, negative consequences for publics. I see. Is there is there a there's not a stratagem in your system? I don't believe called listening, but I mean, is 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 not listening suggested by some of the plays in your in your table? Uh, there, the, one of the systems in the in the influence decision system, um, it, it has to do with cycles. We have two different types of cycles where we have player A and player B and how they interact, and it's it's called our basic cycle of influence. And then there is, uh, I guess, what you might call a trilateral, trilateral or a tricyclic model, where you've got the focal player uh, in the middle who is then interacting with collaborators, competitors, um, and um, and uh, independents. And and which is uh, and and in the simulated environment, by the way, it's very interesting. But no matter how you cut it, in any of those cycles, whether it's the two on two or the one on three, uh, there is uh, in in our uh, schematic, um, three or four places in which research can and should be done, which I believe is a form of, of listening. Um, uh, so, you know, if, if a play is, quote, run or occurs in an environment, then the focal player then has to consider what has happened. Well, that, so research has to happen at that phase. Mm -hmm. They then cons consult the system for what might be advisably um, the, the best strategies to use, and then I think they have to simulate it, which is a form of research, and then they have to execute it. And then they have to start listening again. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, listening is not a strategy. Uh, we do have stratagems in the system called passing and pausing, but to me those are different. I, I think that basically the notion of research, however it's done by whatever vehicles, primary, secondary, so on and so forth, um, happen at each of the phases of the cycles that we've attempted to articulate. 
it's important to distinguish what kind of research is yes. being done because there's asymmetrical research which say political candidates do they Very test a message to yeah. see so if i say this would you how would you react if i say this yes. and this and so on so yes. they always try out messages or yeah. symbolic strategies to see which might be more effective and if they find one is most effective then they develop talking points and then we hear the same thing over and over again ad nauseum so i would like research not just to test out my own ideas but as a way of formulating my own ideas right. or formulating the, the decisions of the company in the first place so it's important and i'm not sure where if in your system research fits into both those categories but i do think most research in the industry is done to in an evaluation sense just to see if we accomplished what we set out to accomplish but not in a formative sense to help develop decisions and policies well, com in coming place. from industry and uh, you know it, it it is very clear that industry's definition of research is sometimes very purposive you know and, and can be uh, almost self-serving and uh, I, I don't think it's up to me to, to try to explain or re-explain good social science research. But there should, within our cycles, be plenty of room for it to be done well and right, and we hope that it would be. Taking, taking a, a, a broad view, um, in your 30, 40 years of, you know, since you really developed the models, have you are you hopeful? Do you see with some of the new technologies, with the internet, with others, are, are public relations practitioners practicing more s symmetrical communication or, you know, did those, the, the positive side of your, of your theories, are they still, uh, are you, uh, I shouldn't say still pessimistic, but are you still, uh, uh, are you still looking at, looking at the profession and saying we're not doing enough symmetrical communication? Well. Not the first thing that happens when a new medium is introduced is that people use it the way they use the old medium. And for example, when television was first introduced, uh, people just read the news in front of the TV camera without realizing they could use pictures. And there are many other examples of this. So the first thing that happened when the internet came about is that people continued to use it as an information dump. Uh, and the thought is all of how much information can I get out there, how, and, you know, how much positive symbolism can I create, and so on. Uh, but the unique nature of, of, sci of digital media is interaction. And I think it, it's inevitable that symmetrical approaches will be used because you simply cannot use anything else very effectively with digital media. You cannot control the information that goes to people. They can get information whenever they, wherever they want. So if, for example, there's a crisis and you don't disclose what happened, they'll find it out someplace else on the Internet. Um, if there are negative parts of your product, I, I won't buy any product without searching all of the des discussions thoroughly. And it amazes <laughs> me that companies don't deal with what's on the Internet when they're told that a dehumidifier wears out within six months or, or that washing machines don't wash anymore since they're high efficiency, etc., etc., that they would deal with this or at least open a dialogue to explain about these sorts of things. So I think that there is still a great deal of asymmetrical communication going on, but I don't think it can be effective. And this is why I continue to come back, you know, what do we advise people to do? What is going to be effective in the sense that it's going to, well, first you have to uh, make people aware of something, you know, whatever it is you're sure. communicating about, you have to influence their cognitions, what they think about it, their attitudes, how they evaluate it, and their behavior of what they do. So all of this is, you know, in a sense, the same thing we do when we develop relationships, we use communication in some way. So I want to know both ways. You know, is management aware of what publics are thinking? Is management thinking able to reproduce and understand cognitively what publics are thinking? Do they tend to agree that publics may be right and then behave in a way that's in the interest of publics? And this, you can also look at a co-orientational framework, which we might call 
accuracy agreement mm -hmm. uh, and so on and our mutual behavior of ways of describing what we used to describe as asymmetrical kinds of effects.